So I want to now discuss the all-in-one solutions. So this is a lot of stuff, right? That's a lot of detail. It's kind of hard to get a handle on all of it. And you might be stuck with a bunch of point solutions to all of the parts of this problem, which might be annoying to manage, might be expensive. Um, and it, there's a great pull towards just unifying all of this workflow under one tool. And I think it really, um, you know, single system for everything. It can encompass getting a notebook, so for development, scaling experiments, maybe even provisioning GPUs to run those experiments on, tracking the results, versioning the models, maybe even deploying the models, and then maybe even monitoring how the deployed models perform. And I think it, the, the first, I think, public uh, realization of this idea that it should all be just one thing was in 2016 with this uh, FB Learner Flow, which is Facebook describing their like, AI platform, which basically goes from data to features to training to actually getting deployed on CPUs. So it trains on GPUs, deploys on CPUs, and then monitors the predictions, and even connects the data flywheel kind of hooks, like the like button, the common button, back into the data source. So great post. Uh, Uber quickly followed up with Michelangelo, the machine learning platform. Um, the people at Google published TensorFlow, or TFX, TensorFlow-based production scale machine learning platform. It was a paper for a couple of years, and now it's also, it's really the backbone for Google Cloud Platform, uh, TFX. So there's tools for data validation, transforming data, analyzing models, serving the model. And the Google Cloud AI platform kind of has the same flow, right? So there's things for ingesting data, processing data, um, developing, training at scale, testing, and deploying. And SageMaker is another thing like this, which basically promises you, or promises help, promises to help you with collecting the data, maybe even labeling it, storing it, choosing the machine learning model, training it at scale, having managed environments, and then when you're done with the model, actually deploying it in production with one click and watching, watching it with monitoring tools. Uh, the catch there is 40% markup over corresponding EC2 instances. So for example, let's say you want to train a model, right? You would need a GPU instance. Let's say it costs you a dollar to get a K80 instance on Amazon Web Services. It'll cost you $1.40 to have that instance provisioned through SageMaker. That's kind of how it works. But in return, you get the nice things that it provides. So maybe it'll be easier for you to start a notebook. Your experiments will be tracked. Um, your, uh, your instance will come online with like CUDA configured and everything like that. So. There's startups that do the same thing. So there's Neptune Machine Learning Lab. You know, build machine learning, use your favorite tools, collaborate, run on-prem or in the cloud. Quickly find and compare your best experiments. There's Floyd Hub, Jupyter Notebook, deploy train models, uh, zero setup deep learning. There's paper space gradient, the same flow of develop to train, to measure, to deploy. Uh, determine AI is a startup from Berkeley that started off doing this on-prem, but now they also support the cloud. And uh, they actually have a couple of cool things that I haven't seen in other, in other places, which is they have hyperparameter tuning. It's kind of state-of-the-art using hyperband. One of the founders is, uh, wrote the paper about hyperband. And then they also have distributed training, like wrappers that are in-house and supposedly work better than, than what PyTorch and TensorFlow provide. The one I want to cover that I think is like the most feature rich that I've seen uh, is Domino Data Lab. So I just want to like cover their features and then you guys can decide whether it could be right for you. So you can provision compute, so you can select what kind of uh, machine you want. Could be a GPU machine, could be just a CPU machine. You could get a Jupyter instance, you could get a RStudio instance. When you run experiments, they all get tracked in a central place like we've seen with other tools like weights and biases. You can deploy a train model as a REST API on, uh, with one click. Uh, interestingly, someone asked, you can monitor predictions, and there's actually uh, a little like prediction data distribution chart versus your training data distribution chart. So if they start looking very different, that might be like a visual signal for you to, to pay attention. You can publish little applets, kind of like Streamlit, um, where let's say you've got a data science model working. 
you want to show it to some other team or your boss, um, you can like quickly get a server going in Domino Data Lab, point them to the URL. You don't have to figure out how to do that yourself. Uh, for the managers, you can like monitor the spend of your team, so you see like how much money are we actually spending, how many instances are we launching, who's launching the most instances, and all the projects are going to be in one place with some kind of usage metric and the cost of them and the stakeholder and maybe notes around them. So I made a little table um, between hardware, you know, what does this run on, resource management, hyperparameter optimization, storing the models, reviewing experiments, deploying the models, and then monitoring the deployed models. We can kind of go through and see like Neptune, paper space gradient, weights and biases, Comet ML, Floyd Hub, Algorithm I didn't talk about, I'll talk about it tomorrow. Determined AI, Amazon SageMaker, um, Google Cloud Machine Learning Engine, Domino Data Lab. So this is, yeah, it's, you know, it's an interesting thing to observe that a point solution might start in the place and then the tendency is to expand to like this whole stack. Um, some, some providers make you use their hardware. So like Amazon SageMaker can only be used with Amazon GPUs, right? But Domino Data Lab, for example, can be used on Amazon or Google Cloud, or Weights and Biases doesn't even provision hardware. You can use it on-prem. So um, I think that is it. So you guys have any questions? Yeah, so the question is, what is the recommendation for actually, it's a little overwhelming to see all the options. Like, is there a clearly correct thing to do? And I think the answer is, unfortunately, no. I think at this point in the development of the software stack, like everyone's figuring it out, right? Over the last few years, people have been figuring it out. It's a little bit of a race. But I think there hasn't been like a clear winner just yet, which means that the best solution for us as practitioners is to just understand all parts of the stack such that we can make an informed decision ourselves. So for some people, a fully managed solution will be the best thing, but for some people it won't. So if you already have a lot of your own hardware, for example, SageMaker is not the right choice, right? But if you have nothing and you definitely have to be on AWS, then maybe SageMaker is the right choice. But if you have DevOps engineers on your team, do you want to pay the 40% markup or do you want to figure out Kubeflow on Amazon and just do that yourself, right? So I think the best thing right now is just to understand it. Yeah, the question is more like, in your experience, how hard is to customize one of these like, frameworks? Let's say you have a managed platform, and you need to decide whether you customize it TFX, or you start to build your solution, which is not as functionally rich, but like do what you need at the moment. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it definitely doesn't make sense to build your own component of this full system, right? So like, I would never build an experiment management system because I know there's uh, providers that I can just use, right? I would never build something, like I would never re-implement Kubernetes. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think there's an overall solution that I can recommend, but I covered the point solutions. I wouldn't recommend re-implementing any one of the point solutions, and it's gonna be up to you to decide whether you wanna stack up multiple point solutions or try to go for like an all-in-one solution. Yeah. All right, thank you.